Hey everybody and welcome back to another X-Plane 11 video. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, I'm going to share some tips that I've picked up uh, mainly from YouTube and a couple of streamers and it's just to do with the housekeeping um, you can be doing on your machine uh, to keep X-Plane running uh, as sweet as a nut. Um, to start off, if you're or when you buy X-Plane 11 um, you need to know where is the best location on your hard drive or hard drives where to put it. Um, anything I've read so far would be keep it away from your main programs file and if you can at all keep it on a separate drive from your operating system altogether. Um, so it depends on your system that you have. If you have multiple drives you're laughing, if not um, perhaps you can look at uh, picking up an SSD. Uh, these solid state drives are not too expensive these days and they really cut down the loading times uh, for your sim. So on my system, there's a whole load of drives here. Most of them are all external uh, hard drives, but I have my local disk, which would be looking after all the main program files, operating system, all the, the chunk of what my PC is doing. I keep x -Plane on a SSD, which is this one here. You can rename these when you install them, so you can call it the x -Plane drive or whatever way you want to do it. So on my machine, x -Plane 11 root folder is located in here. Um, and, you know, if you're looking at the size of what's available, if your uh, custom scenery, if you're collecting it over the years or all the aircraft you're collecting over the years, you can eventually then move them um, to a different drive if needs be. They can go onto an external or another SSD. Um, you can use anything like, uh, I think it's Symbolic Drive or you know you can use a hard copy or a soft copy. Um, there's plenty of videos on that and we might have a look at it in another video. So on my system, for example, I have everything in here. The custom scenery folder, which is the bulk of all my scenery, which is massive. Um, you'll notice that it has the shortcut icon here. That basically is a symbolic drive whereby if I click in on this, this information, albeit the address is reading here, it's actually picking it up on a different drive over here. It's reading it from this drive here. Um, so that's the first thing to do. Always aim for a different drive if possible, but uh, definitely keep it away from your program files and anywhere that your operating system is going to be checking out. Okay. Next thing to do is looking after backing up some of your files. Uh, depending on what space you have available on your system, uh, it's no harm doing a full backup of these uh, folders every uh, now and again, just in case something bad goes wrong. Uh, the main ones I look after would be custom scenery um, and the resources and uh, some of the output stuff. So the likes of your aircraft and stuff, it's, it's up to you. Uh, I don't do it mainly because most of the aircraft, they get updates through, be it Skunk, uh, the Skunk Crafter, or the Skunk, skunk Crafts, let's say that properly, um, or when you're downloading updates directly from websites. So if you go into your output folder, there's a couple of folders in here you need to keep an eye on, uh, particularly if it comes to your updating X-Plane, be it there's a new release, or you're going to beta test stuff, uh, and as in you want to get the new beta. So when your X-Plane is running nice and sweet and you're happy enough with it, it's no harm to do a backup of your preferences. Um, if you ever have a problem then when you install the updated version, there's a number of files in here you can keep rather than deleting the entire folder. All right, Because when you delete the whole folder, you have to go back through all your control settings, assign keys, and it just takes time. So you can keep your control profiles, your achievements, um, your calibration, joystick settings, keys, window screen uh, or screen res and window positions. They're the ones that I keep. So I'll copy them, save them somewhere safe, and then I'll just delete the folder. Uh, and then when X-Plane reloads and it uh, initializes, it rebuilds all these for you. So it's only a matter of throwing them back in and overriding them. That way you get to keep all your keyboard settings and bindings and all your joystick settings. The next one to look at would be the shader cache. So again, it's recommended, uh, depending on whatever system you're using, you can delete what's inside the, the uh, shader cache and then when X-Plane reboots, it'll reinitialize that for you. So this can be particularly useful if you know, you're know you averaging 30 to 40 frames before an update, you've then updated X-Plane and then you know the next thing is you're getting 15 to 20 frames. I would always start looking at your shader cache and your preferences. And once you delete them and keep the main files you want to keep, uh, it tends to give you back the performance you once had. Okay, so next up then, it's all of your activation um, numbers. So you buy an aircraft, it comes with an activation number. You buy some of the scenery, it comes with an activation number. Um, you, most of the time, the site in which you're buying, it keeps it there, um, or you get an email with it. 
what I tend to do is just create a simple spreadsheet and just keep everything there so at least everything is uh, saved now I obviously have these blanked out for a reason but on my list I'd have you know all the aircraft that I'd have and also the um, the serial numbers for them it just means everything is in a nice tidy clean place and when I need to reactivate I don't need to go back through tons of emails uh, to try and find them so a simple Excel and just be careful then obviously don't have it in uh, a folder you can you can share or if you're streaming or making videos just make sure you blank everything out and um, so you're not giving away your serial numbers so that's what I do with them okay so next up we're gonna have a look at some of the navigation programs you can use and um, just to basically help you plan your flights uh, and show you where to go and everything else so open your browser there are a number of sites so you have Simbrief Simbrief really handy site and um, it's free to register so you can create a new flight when you click on this guy here this will give you access to um, picking up the likes of your flight plans you can export the flight then uh, it'll export as an FMS X-Plane will pick that up directly uh, and depending on the aircraft you're flying it'll save it to the type um, that the, that aircraft wants most notably the uh, the flight factor stuff so the information you can put in here the airframe as in the aircraft you're going to use you can add your own fleet to this uh, with serial numbers uh, where you're coming from where you're heading to any alternate uh, airports so for example if we just do quite a basic one uh, we say we take off from Cork and we want to go to Dublin this will load it in we can pick a Cessna 172 all the profiles will load up uh, give you the name the current air arc and then it'll show you the routing uh, and you can pick these so that's the route it's giving it you can pick a couple of alternatives here you can analyze the route and that's it you can then go and export that straight into uh, explain so i like simbrief um, and i think project fly can link to this as well uh, so next over we have sky vector or sky vector uh, highly detailed in the US, uh, but I do a nice bit of flying here in uh, Ireland, UK and some of Europe. Um, again, another free site, you can register it up, you can go into a flight plan, say where you want to go from. So we say Cork uh, to Dublin. It'll load in a direct line and then you can add in some alternatives or go via. And a simple thing is even dragging it and go via Waterford here. So if you plan that in, It'll give you the information around Waterford. But you can go via, so if you just drag it down and you can add it to your plan, it adds it to your plan. Uh, and again, it's it's really handy for just getting some information. Um, like it tells you some of the coordinates, the, cla the uh, class airspace um, or any restricted areas as well. So depending on where you're flying um, and the information available, Sky Vector has an awful lot of information plus it tracks the weather. So speaking of weather, um, there are a number of sites you can use for the weather. Uh, we'll look at them shortly. Uh, the last system for planning I use is a program called Plan G. I'll just drag that over here for you. So Plan G, uh, again, another free program, which is awesome. This has a lot of information again for you. So you can set up a plan, and um, you can find certain airports and it'll give you a lot of information various waypoints and um, it even has airways and you can tell it what you're flying with be it vfr or uh, or ifr but it'll give you high altitude and low altitude airways as well and um, there is a connect mode on this it'll connect directly to xplane you need to download um, i think it's x x or xp uipc it's one of them you see the links on it um, and it also has a link here to vatsim so you can see who's flying around near you so Plan G, it, it's when you connect to it, it essentially becomes a moving map and it is very handy. Like I found with the uh, the new stuff from Orbex, the True Earth stuff, um, I w like I'd, I'd know some of the areas here, but like you'd be flying down into small little areas and it'll give you all the name, Thorny Island and we're coming over here to Bosham and, you know, it's just, it's another way to keep, um, keep everything in track and in line. So you have Plan G there, which is really good. Now onto the weather, depending on what you're using, be it Active Sky or Ultra Weather um, or FS um, Global Real Weather. Um, if you don't have any of them, you can still get an idea of what way the weather is around you. Uh, Q8 Pilot showed me this link uh, he had on one of his videos, and this is called Venti Sky. Now it's similar to that of the Windy app, 
but it's just gives a very good indication um and you know what way the weather is going to be where you want to fly if you're you know it depends if you're doing short range or long range flights and um, so you can go to wind speed wind gusts if there's any precip uh, temperature and with the wind speed is interesting because it goes up quite high so it'll give you an indication if you're planning your flights uh, and where you want to fly to depending on the wind speed that'll have an impact on your fuel usage uh, so venture sky i i just like this website it's uh, it's quite in depth you can go back um look at historical data or you can go forward to give you um fairly accurate forecastings of what way the weather is going to be so i'll leave a link for that in the description below so next up we've just uh, fired up the sim here and we're just going to go in through uh, some of the settings here just to give a, a brief outline most of the stuff you're going to know yourself the main ones that i look at would be the flight model the uh how many frames you're going to be running um depending on the aircraft you have and you'll notice this if you're flying choppers a lot you'll find you need to ramp this up to between 8 and 10 and basically it gets rid of the shaking uh, that's in the aircraft uh, i tend to fly a lot of ga aircraft i tend to leave this set on four uh, it just it basically it's um if you're flying kind of smaller aircraft it just means that like the ground doesn't come up on you too quick because the simulation for the aircraft uh runs that a little bit smoother obviously then if you're you know the bigger the slower yokes um keep it on the default so i usually leave that set on four for ga aircraft and if i'm flying choppers i wrap it all the way up to uh up to 10. Um, your sound settings it depends again what you're going to be using it's up to yourself really um, and if the ATC stuff I don't use the the inbuilt ATC uh, although I am messing around with it since the new update it is improved but yeah it's um, it's 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 not everyone's cup of tea your graphic settings now if you come from an FSX background, this thing was probably the most important to you. Like that's what happened to me. Like apart from using the sim to fly, it became more of well, let's let's see what I can get out of this. That was the daily challenge. Can I get an extra frame? Uh, I tend to leave these alone in X-Plane. So basically, anything that's represented here will be heavy on your graphics card, and anything over here will be on your CPU on your processor. So for me, this is fine. This all works for me, and it's based on my system. Uh, which I'm using a i7 7700K um, at around 4.6 and I have a GTX 1080. So everything here is fine. Um, your visual settings, field of view, again, it's up, it's up to you really. I use 85, um, any of the offsets don't need to use. Uh, visual settings, forward with a 3D cockpit. Um, and then sometimes you have these offsets I found in the last couple of updates and explain these tend to move during the uh, during the sim only by tiny numbers so it's just a matter of resetting them over then to your network settings uh, so again depends what you have attached to um, your sim be it you know you can have a tablet running you can have uh, additional PCs running uh, you can use this in network mode all your settings are in here Data outputs, the main thing I watch is the frames uh, when I'm testing different uh, locations or sceneries and just get a general handle on what way performance is. So if you click on frame rate and show in cockpit, you get the line, um, which is this guy here. That'll appear on your screen and it'll give you an idea of where your frames are. Just while you're looking at that, it'll tell you what your CPU is trying to do and what your GPU is trying to do. So usually if whatever number is quite high, uh, and you're getting low frames that'll indicate what um what piece of hardware is suffering back into x-plane then and then you can adjust your graphics uh depending on the numbers so the higher numbers being read from the frame rate counter and um, you could try and lower something in here joystick settings the setup i have uh, i have the hotas warthog there from trustmaster and um, again it depends on what you want to use or what you want to fly uh, all these settings these are just my settings um, everyone's are going to be different uh, one thing though i saw it on catch traders stream was there's a button i have binded uh, on the joystick which is the main number one fire button um, but what i have this binded to is select the camera with a view id of one so whatever you're going to save as your default camera in x-plane be it you know the cockpit cam or the main camera you use and um, when you're panning around the aircraft or if you're outside or inside or you're doing a flyby it's only a matter of clicking one little button and it gets you straight back into the cockpit in the native view that you're you're going to do most of your flying with and um, so that's there 
Uh, you have a number of profiles you can create. So user profiles, I have set up the HOTAS. I have one for the um, CM Marchetti, only because the flaps, uh, they're not incremental, they're constant. So when you move your flap lever, it uh, depends how long you have the button press for, that'll move your flaps. Um, so I have that set up there. Um, for airliners, depending on whatever throttle system you have, you might want to have a dual uh, throttle system. Um, and then the mixture, I would put that onto the spoilers. Um, and then everything else HOTAS tends to be for the uh, for the vast majority of everything else. So that's what I do with that. Control sensitivities, again, it depends what you're trying to do uh, or what you're trying to get out of your sim. These are my settings. I'm happy enough with the results. Um, your mileage will vary. So there are a number of videos out there. Um, so it's, it's trial and error. Like it's, you're not going to do any harm for it. Best thing to do, um, you know, if you're going to change anything, get the snippet tool and you can just, you know, draw a big snippet over it, save the picture. And then if you do change anything and you forget, well, at least you have a screenshot of what it is or even use your phone and just take a picture of it. Keyboard, all your key bindings, um, depending on what it is you want. So for example, you could have your view set up to your numpad um, you could have uh, some of the other plugins like um, X ATC Chatter or X Camera. Uh, you can bind all them to keys. So they're all it's, it's again it's user preference it's whatever way you want to do it uh, gps hardware if you're running any external uh, moving maps be it the um i think it's uh, for flight bits and pieces like that and then vr hardware so if you have vr hardware be it the oculus or the uh the vive your settings go in here so that's pretty much all my settings that i do and uh yeah it, it works fine so when it comes to creating a flight, there's a couple of things you can do in here, okay? You can select, um, obviously everything's broken down by uh, the type of aircraft that it is. Um, and then we have obviously whatever airports, the weather and the time of day. But we'll start with the aircraft. So if there's an aircraft that you're constantly flying uh, and you just happen to really like it, you'll notice that there's a star in the top right hand corner. If you click the star, it'll then create a new car uh, category up the very, very top. And this will place all your favorite aircraft. So depending on how many planes you have in your hangar, uh, and you know it's not about how many planes you have it's it's what you fly the most so once you do that you can highlight it as a, a favorite aircraft it'll be pinned to the top uh, and this, the very same way when it comes to your scenery so your location once you type it in or you need to find it uh, again if you hit the star it'll flag it so if you go by all your stars and you click buy it it should be able to put all of these together uh, all at the top of the screen so it's only a matter of, uh, there's probably none saved here because I changed my preferences. So say there's one uh, and we go say Dublin, I want to use that as a favorite as well. And uh, I'll just say Cork. So if these are going to be your favorites, if these are the airports you're going to be flying to most of the time, once they're all starred uh, and you click the star button, it'll keep them all at the top for you. So it just makes things a little bit quicker when you want to go back into your sim and you know if you downloaded a new scenery or you've bought a new scenery and you want to fly over there uh, quite regularly just hit the star and it'll save it for you as well and um, with the weather uh, it depends on what you want to do you can use real world weather you can create your own uh, or you can use a custom metar there are plenty of videos on that i won't go into it too much today um, but that's everything for your weather and then your time of day you can pick uh, the time of year. There's no seasons as such in X-Plane, but uh, for example, if you're flying in uh, winter time in Europe and 10 o'clock at night, it's going to be pitch dark, as opposed to the, if you're flying in the summertime at 10 o'clock, it's kind of sunset or it's dusk. So that's kind of uh, where all that's from. So here we are in the sim, uh, and what we can look at here now, with our frame counter that we've activated, um, we can see here, according to this reading, the CPU is running a lot heavier than the GPU, uh, which is an indication that we need to lower some of our settings um, that are CPU intensive. So to do that, we'll click on our settings, we'll go over to graphics, and we'll pick over this side, which tends to laden the CPU. So if we bring these down to medium, so we're getting about 40 frames, we'll select this and it'll reload. After a couple of minutes of reloading, you can see that our frames have now increased uh, almost by 10 more frames uh, and the CPU has lowered a bit and the GPU is still ticking over nicely. So it has a huge impact on uh, on your flight sim performance. So 
another little tip while we're here i'm panning around the aircraft i'm using the default uh, view system if you hold down the control key and use an arrow key uh, it gives you this small small this slow steady movement um usually you can click on the screen with the right button on the mouse and you can pan around and up or down or whatever but uh if you just hit control and move an arrow key you still have the function of your mouse here uh, so it just makes for these nice transitions and you can use the roller ball on your mouse to zoom in and out here as well you can go up or down or left and right whatever way you want to do it so it just adds to that uh it just adds to the uh the eye candy i suppose when you can move the uh the mouse around or the view around rather a little bit slower so that definitely had an impact on our frames by reducing the number of world objects and um, so that's always great to see the other tip as well in relation to having a key binded just to get you back into the cockpit so i'm panning here now and if i just click the joystick button i have assigned we're straight back in and it's no different than if i'm panning around a simple click and a strike back forward again. It makes uh, for a real handy jump back to what you need to be looking at. So that's pretty much it uh, in relation to in the sim. Any of the plugins or settings here, you have a plugin menu up here that tells you what's currently running. Um, the more plugins you tend to put in, uh, the more risk you run of breaking your sim. Uh, now it depends entirely on the plugins that you're using. So it's a uh, we will do a video later on uh, on my favorite plugins, but uh, it's it's heavily saturated. There's plenty of videos of them anyway. Um, so yeah, you can have a look at them. And then finally, just uh, where to get more information or where to download new scenery uh, or access even to download some aircraft. Uh, I've just put up a couple of sites here that I use uh, quite a lot. Uh, the first one and I've, my favorite one will be the xplane.org. Uh, there's a great community on there. Um, there's plenty of help available if you need it. A lot of tutorials, advice, um, and some cool, uh, some cool features as well with a lot of the screenshots and videos. Uh, next to that, you can click on the Org Store. That brings you to the Explain Org Store, uh, a full marketplace and where you can buy all your aircraft and sceneries from here. Um, you just register up your email account uh, and you can go credit card or PayPal. So they're all there. Uh, next over then you have the X Aviation website. Again, different products. They have their own lineup of aircraft scenery and software uh, with plugins. Uh, most notably would be the uh, TBM 900, FS Global Blue Weather, um, and a handful of other bits and bobs as well. Uh, next to that, you have Aerosoft. Um, again, they would have a massive online store, huge presence, not only for, um, for X-Plane, but also Flight Sim and P3D. Um, and pretty much everything simulation they have it all there so the aerosoft uh the aerosoft site is quite good to use and then finally just flight they have their own aircraft uh, but they also have everyone else's as well um, so these are the main sites i go into just to uh if i'm buying or if i want to read up on stuff or see what's currently in development uh, and also any special offers that could be there for uh, good bargains and that uh, so that's it for this video guys i hope you liked it uh, it is a very basic introduction to some of the tips that i have for you and um, if there's anything you've learned give us a thumbs up if there's uh if i've got anything wrong do leave it in the comment section below uh, i'm not out to uh, be a leader or uh, a doctor of instruction when it comes to this stuff it's just trying to share a bit of uh, a few tips that i've picked up over the years so many thanks for watching look after yourselves and i'll see you again really soon